Cool. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so a lot of good stuff going on. Um, uh, hopefully we're going to get uh, Siberia in here pretty soon, uh, you know, logged in. But uh, I just wanted to highlight right off the top of the bat some of the exciting places that um, OpenWorm is popping up um, online. And some of those um, you know, are being facilitated by us, and some of them are kind of happening um, kind of um, on their own, in a way. So, um, so we're popping up interesting places. Here's interesting place number one. Um, mm -hmm. This is a site that's been giving us a little bit of traffic. Um, a, a, um, somebody who wanted to write about um, preservation of uh, the brain. Um, of course, my my internet connection doesn't seem to want to load it up. But um, for those of you who are clicking on it there with the agenda, oh man, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can see our little iconic graphic at the bottom uh, for the um, you know, for the network. Of the CL against the Why isn't it working? Okay. Well, you can check it out yourself. So that's one. That's actually a few, a few. Uh, I think like over a week old. Um, the second one, and we'll see if that loads up. Oh, I see. My computer is overheating. That's why it's not loading up. <laughs> <laughs> How many tabs do you have? I just closed a bunch, actually. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just working really hard on the. Um, I think it's working really hard on the hangout. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so so much for sharing my screen, but um, but you can click on those links. The second one is even is even more interesting. Um, hey, Andre. Um, we're getting a little bit of background noise from you, by the way. You might want to mute if you're not talking. Hi everybody. Yeah. Hello, Sergey. Hello, Sergey. Hello, Sergey. So uh, I'm I'm trying and failing to uh, load up a couple links to show off here, but uh, the main one that you guys should should be seeing if you're just popping in here is on the agenda. First two links, um, basically a couple blogs up on the web. One of them is Scientific American, uh, which is really cool. And thanks to Porig for um, facilitating sending the the images for that. Um, but basically, the um, the first one is just about brain preservation and sort of a thinking science fiction about that. The second one is much more relevant because it's literally about like connectomes and it goes through a big long list of um, folks that are working on connectomes. Uh, you know, featuring folks like Sebastian Sung and featuring um, Corey Bargman um, and others. And we're and we're kind of make up the uh, the graphic art for for that article. Um, it's actually rather well researched, um, so I really want to thank the author at that particular paper for that stuff. Um, I just I think it's a really exciting, um, a really exciting thing that we're getting kind of picked up and talked about in that context. And so um, I think we should all take a minute and feel, feel good about that. What's that? To open warm somewhere in the article. Um, I think there's less in the text than there is just kind of like in the picture. Yeah, see the background noise coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so actually, the author of that piece uh, contacted me because uh, of the poster at uh, Neuroinformatics. Actually, he found the abstract of the Munich poster and. Just contacted me as one of the authors on that, um, but that's how he found the Open Worm project. Yeah. So our presentation there clearly, you know, is uh, visible online. So, um, so that's good. So we should feel really good about that. Basically, the work that we're doing with Connect Your Own is getting noticed, and we need to keep pushing it forward from where we are. But I think it's really exciting. It's a really oppor good opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Sergey got muted. Oh, uh, sorry. Just testing. See whether um, <laughs> where the noise was coming from. Can anybody else hear that? 
Sounds like a TV on the background. You can look at the, you can look at the bottom panel, uh, just below everybody's portrait on the bottom, and you can see the little green line. The little green line will pop up when there's when there's some sort of noise. So um, so you can see where it's coming from. Yeah, there's no noise. All right, and just on time, Jinza. Hello, Jinza. Yes. Great. Yes, it's me. Great. Okay, so I also another update. So perfect timing um, from the last uh, from the last week is that Jinza sort of popped back up on the radar and said uh, he'd like to help out, and I think he's been working with Andre. So um, you're always welcome to uh, you know come in and any anything that uh, you want to help out with, you're welcome to. And so I invited him to the meeting. Today, just uh, kind of pop in, so it's nice to see you. And um, okay, thank you. Basically, uh, I think Andre has the best idea for you know where you can be the most helpful um, in the PCISP8. So I'll leave it to Andre to um, yes, you know, to get you uh, sorted out and organized. But it's nice to have you on. Okay, great. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're just joining, you might want to hit this uh, document here, which is where we're going through the, the agenda. Um, okay, so I don't want to take a lot of time with this meeting. I, I in general, kind of want to make sure that these meetings are efficient. They're not long meetings. So I do want to. I'm going to kind of keep folks the time. Um, I do just want to kind of. I want to do. I want to make one point for connection. Um, with uh, with Korg, um, which is that uh, when we met up uh, with Mike Bella back in London, we were on holidays. We were talking about a particular point of RML detail that um, I just wonder. I don't know if we've actually looped it back with you, um, and we probably should post it, actually post it on the RML technology mailing list. But um, it's just about uh, having an example with RML that values fixed tau. For the purposes of the muscle cell, did this did yeah. use of this get back to you? Uh, I, I Mike has mentioned that to me before. I haven't seen the specific example, but um, if he or somebody can just uh, send the specific example, uh, I'm pretty sure it's possible to express in UML2. So I don't think there should be any problem there. But um, I haven't chased down the or seen the specific example. Okay. So and. I, I'm not certain that it's been committed to the muscle cell GitHub repository, but um, I know he's got some other forms of the model there, so I just need to uh, look through that. But yeah, um, okay. I'll take on making sure that this is that this is. Connected. Would you prefer that that we send a, a message to the neuromel technology list, or do you think? I don't. I mean, um, it yeah. Matter? Um, if I get a half an hour, I'm definitely I'm sure I can uh, track it down. Maybe if you, you're hidden, he can uh, send a specific mail with what the problem is and point to a file, then I'll make a few minutes to look at it. Just me, yeah. We basically wanted an example for uh, muscles and where we would use a constant tau instead of the default. Yeah, I think I pointed them at one, but. Um, I'm not sure whether that one, yeah, I, I assumed that that was adequate, but um, I haven't looked at the specific implementation that he had that he needed to reduce. Okay. But if, if, yeah, if, if somebody can point me to the mod file or whatever of the uh, channel uh, in its original format, then I can definitely um, try to get that into your email too. Okay, I'll, I'll send a mail around on that. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's all good. Um, okay. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that uh, was what Giovanni started to talk about right at the top of the uh, top of the meeting, um, which I was getting a little excited about. Um, which is uh, so, Andre. We noticed uh, a movie just popped up uh, from you uh, recently, and it looks really exciting. So I wanted to give you the floor to uh, to discuss it. Well, there is not, not much to discuss. Um, just I spent uh, these two weeks uh, to um, do it. 
So now Elastic Matter works uh, along with uh, PCI's pH liquid. They can interact. Uh, and somebody, um, somebody post the movie so that we can all watch it. I'm yeah, I know. Because I would just basically after this, I posted it on the blog. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, there was uh, one uh, surprise. Uh, I didn't expect this. But it's very cool. Uh, we uh, did not need to make time step less than it was. Uh, our current value is enough uh, to deal with uh, both um, liquid and uh, elastic matter. So we, we, do, we don't slow down when we add uh, these particles. Then uh, don't lose um, computational performance. Uh, I hope you're all seeing this movie. This is I'm just actually watching it for the first time. This is super cool. Very cool. Andre, what is the current time step on that? The same. Is it 4.2 milliseconds? Oh, yeah. I'll better check it in the Program. This is really exciting. <laughs> I suddenly, I suddenly see the worm like swimming in water. You know, like it would be nice to have something worm shaped time. that gets dropped into water. <laughs> A little jello worm. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> to start. <laughs> Um, here is the current step um, in the chat. Mm -hmm. So it's five milliseconds. Five milliseconds. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's oh really cool. no no no! H half of millisecond, if I'm correct. Right? Zero point five. Yeah, it's zero point five. Well, it depends on how you're representing time relative to floats. So, um, <laughs> if that second, it's zero point five milliseconds. Is it? <coughs> so we are in just one step from creating a warm body and um, maybe muscle cells. Uh, muscle cells are more complex because um, uh, we need to introduce. Um, Special structure of um, uh, springs, which should be um, able to um, contract. Um, and here in this uh, demo, we have we see only um, um, a passive matter which doesn't um, contract itself on the external force, but well, um, it's significantly less problem than. The one which was already sold, uh, and uh, I should tell that um, this is not just uh, something which was done uh, just quickly to show that it works. It's already optimized, uh, and all the stuff which works with elastic matter is um, very fast, um, and. Um, do not need uh, additional optimizations. So this is running on your Tesla? Um, no, this was done on Core i7 uh, CPU, which is um, which can be compared, uh, which is almost equal to, to Tesla, to oh. that uh, version of Tesla which we have. Okay. Um, do you do you think it needs to be optimized more? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it it's not necessary because uh, well I know uh, all um, I know time uh, consumption of all uh, functions during uh, their work, um, and um, now I can tell that there are two uh, most um, time consuming. One of them is neighborhood search, and another one is uh, PCI's pH iterations. So, in integration of physics. 
That's awesome. Everybody got a chance to see this movie? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Really cool stuff. Awesome. Uh, one question I have is, uh, are, we, are we planning to get uh, the latest changes with Elastic Matter and all the bug fixes into the uh, simulation engine so that we can do the WebGL visualization? Is, is that a current plan? I don't know. I, I heard from Sergey that he was going to do some of that, but I don't know if what, what's your plans, Andre and, and Sergey, for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I uh, can um, efficiently work with uh, C++ and OpenCL code, which I developed. And I'm not sure that um, I can work with uh, Java code um, uh, at the same, um, with the same uh, quality. Yeah. And, um, so, if we uh, take this um, current source code and uh, convert it into Java with uh, Sergey's help, uh, it will work. But um, I'm not sure that I can uh, continue um, to develop and support it. Um, no, yeah, you can. You can so keep doing it on, 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 on your version, and then with, when we are happy with it, we port it to Java, as you're saying. So. You don't need to stop uh, doing whatever you're doing. I don't want you to like change environment. It's just it would be nice to have this stuff in the simulation engine, but you can keep doing it in, in C++. It's basically mm. we already taken some time ago, uh, thanks to the help from Sergey, a snapshot of the C++ version imported back to Java. All we need to do. Uh, is to take another snapshot, which is to update the code base in the simulation engine, bringing in all the recent development. Uh, so, so I, I think it's a question more for Sergey than for Andre. So, if I understand correctly, uh, we need to. Um, uh, convert uh, C++ to Java uh, every time when significant uh, changes are made, maybe yeah. Yeah. each, yeah. each several mo few months or yeah. something like this. Whenever there is something that it's worth uh, bringing over, uh, but I mean, we don't want you to stop working the way that you are. And, I mean, we're not asking anything like that. We just it would be nice to have the, the changes ported to Java every now and then, every every time there is a milestone, basically. Mm. And hopefully it's not going to be big changes. Maybe now it's going to be big changes, like the Elastic Matter stuff. But if there is just, just a bug fix, maybe it's just a few lines of code that need to change. So the hope is that it, it's not too, it's not a lot of work. So one thing I'd like to hear, maybe if Matteo, if um, if you've got sort of a vision for some next steps here with the with the simulation engine, I think it would kind of help to like kind of motivate and um, coordinate ourselves um, in terms of you know what what you're looking at for basically uh, in relation to SPH, uh, it was released just a couple of days ago, actually the twenty first of September. Uh, milestone version of uh, Virgo 3.6, which had support to WebSocket. WebSocket, uh, just to remind you, was the missing bit in order to stream uh, the simulation from the simulation engine to the web browser. And uh, since that was uh, released, well, it's, it's just released as a milestone, it's not an official release yet, but since that was available, uh, together with Joe, uh, we started trying to get the examples that we had working with Virgo. So that means that basically we're tasting uh, the communication of the web sockets in the simulation engine. As soon as that works, that doesn't work yet. Uh, but there is already a branch in the simulation engine that you will see for testing that. And as soon as that works, 
basically the simulation that is happening in the SPH solver can be streamed to the WebGL front end that uh, Sergey and Gleb were working on. So basically, this is going to be exciting because we'll be able to close the loop and having an actual simulation ongoing uh, on the back end and having that streamed in the front end. And basically, the result will be that all these videos that uh, we are looking at uh, on YouTube, because Andre posts them there, will be able to look at them rendered in real time in the web browser as the simulation is ongoing. And that will be the first step to integrate the treatments. So, in the uh, relation to what Joe was saying, it probably is something that we'll look at with uh, Sergey. Sergey is happy to help us with that, to basically update the Java version that you already ported of the SPH solver with the recent development with Elastic Matter and the optimization that Andre and yourself have been working on. OK, so what do you think it's going to take to get this SPH demo runnable and streaming to the web browser then? Uh, in time? Yeah, and effort, and help. Well, effort is probably going to be uh, myself and Joe trying to get good software working and uh, Sergey, if uh, you can help uh, on updating the SPH version. And I mean, we could be looking at having some something to show off in uh, like starting from, let's say, three weeks, a month. We could have that. OK. Does that seem like a good thing to do? Yeah, no, definitely that that is the plan, and it's a plan that is enabled, uh, that has been enabled since the most recent release of Virgo, because before that we had kind of a roadblock. Uh, and that's uh, that's been the plan all along. If you go back to that Scrum Do uh, software that we are using, there is a there is an epic exactly this. Right. That's good. No, it's good. I'm I'm just sort of reviewing so we can figure out where we're where we're at. Yeah. Um, I think we can take it offline and work with the Sergey and the guys and see how we can coordinate on that if everyone is happy to, to do that and so forth. I think so, Sergey. How's it going? Are you are you up for that? Yeah. Uh, all, everything fine. I think. Mm. Okay, great. Um, and then, uh, and then, Andre is uh, are are you um, uh, are you are you working with Jinza on on this? Um, is all that is is his part of this clear to you? Hey, Andre. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe he's lagging or something. Hi, Alex. Hi, guys. Hi, Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, our, we're up with the, uh, the agenda we're, we're doing is uh, here. I'm working our way through it. OK. I think, I think um, Enza is, is coordinated with Andre. I'll, I'll double check um, to make sure uh, offline. OK. Um, so I think that's that's all clear. Um, Tim and I were working in the last couple of weeks just looking at the um, car model and comparing what we know about um, how that process works with um, what we might do with C. elegans. And Tim drafted up a blog post um, on the subject just to kind of um, get that clear. And I think we're pretty much ready on that. Tim, do you want to say anything about that? Um, no, I'm still working on getting you some uh, links, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, 
unfortunately, this past week or so, I've been slammed on my day job and haven't had a lot of chance to uh, vet some of these things. But uh, hopefully, in the next few days, I'll get it all get it all done. Okay, that's okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, basically, um, you know, looking at how the car model had to um, ingest data, we're finding obviously that there are there are not as as many data for. Uh, the C. elegans as there are for this uh, mycoplasma organism that uh, that was used there. Um, so we're just kind of having a look, and the blog post is intended to see if we can get other folks to help us think about that problem. Um, and so thanks, Tim, for, for working on it. And of course, no no problem. I I think we all understand how this um, how, how we can get planned by others. So, um, let's talk at some point here in the next couple of weeks. Um, okay. Uh, Alex, uh, so I, I heard from Mike that um, you guys have been doing a little bit more on the muscle cell uh, project. Do you want to say anything about that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, basically, we are trying to implement uh, the model by Jordan Boyle into our uh, pyramidal uh, model. We have several problems with that. Uh, basically, Jordan Mm. Apparently, he didn't use the classical uh, Hashman Huxley model. Uh, so, uh, we have to find out a way to, uh, to maybe change it slightly in a way that it still will be close to what Jordan Boyle did. Uh, the main problem is that uh, he basically he treated the time like a uh, time parameters like a constant, so that's a little bit of a problem. But basically, I think we are almost done with potassium channels. Now it's only calcium. I hope that soon we will be done with that, and then we will present some results. Okay. Uh, has this been um, developed on the GitHub uh, repository? Uh, I think not yet. Okay. I mean, we, we have just a template for everything in the GitHub, but the uh, the values itself, I think they're not there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely have a look at that. Uh, if you can send, I mean, uh, there was talk earlier that uh, there was problems con uh, expressing some of the channels in NeuronL2. So I'll definitely um, have a look at that if I see the specific uh, file that uh, was giving problems. Uh, sure, I, I'll send you an email with what we got. Okay. Great. So that, that's it, basically. Okay, great. Um, okay, so those are the kind of updates that I knew that were coming in. Are there any other updates that folks uh, you know want to want to give that I uh, hadn't called out? Folks know about me. Um, kind of related to that, I uh, got an email from Netta Cohen. I was uh, speaking to her at CNS earlier this year. Uh, she sent a link to the latest uh, Jordan Boyle publication. I'll just um, put the link on the website uh, if I have it here. <coughs> um, and basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. some reason I can't edit the file. Uh, okay, but basically, um, uh, I haven't done anything much about it, but uh, she did send a link to the updated. Uh, neuromechanical model, which um, does incorporate spiking neurons, uh, but also uh, simulates the um, uh, yeah, mechanical movement of the worm. It, it, it's not, it, does, it, it doesn't have full real mu uh, muscles, but it does kind of give the general shape of the worm and allows simulation of the uh, locomotion in uh, different um, media water and, I think, more viscous media. Uh, so you can look at the various different types of swimming behavior in the different media. So that's a 2012 Boyle paper. 
uh, there is an executable um, simulation code associated with that. She's keen for me to put that on the open source brain repository, uh, ah. which uh, has also been updated recently, which um, Mateo has been quite busy with. Um, but once that goes up there, then I'll start looking about some different parts of that which can be expressed in NeuroNL and which can be maybe shared between the different models. But I haven't given a great look at it yet. Um, I think it's fairly simple cell models, but uh, it does have a mechanical um, element to it as well. Okay, great. Let's definitely um, find that paper. I'm also having trouble loading up the pages of the Hangout. But, uh, but uh, let's also put that into Mendeley uh, so that uh, folks um, can be sure to read it um, in that group. But uh, that's very exciting. I'm glad that um, you're moving this along. I've actually also um, I've been asked to review a paper for the journal. <laughs> I guess I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. I mean, I'm I'm certainly not in a public. Uh, it is certainly so won't say the it. author or anything. Okay. Like that. Yes. I've been asked to review a paper. It's related to it's related to the area that we're that we're talking about. I'm, I won't, can't be more specific than that. But um, but the point is, is that we are um, we are certainly impacting the computational neuroscience community uh, with regards to C. elegans here. Um, uh, so uh, I think it's all it's all good. I think that um, we're bringing that community into the larger computational neuroscience community. I feel like they've been a little disconnected. So um, that's my only point uh, to make with that. Great. Um, okay. Uh, other updates, uh, folks, want to give? Uh, nope. Okay. All right. Well, um, in, in my view, I'm sort of taking a page from the uh, the book Rework. Um, if you haven't read it, it's uh, it's good, which is sort of suggests a uh, you know, more limited meeting. So I think for this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the meeting now, and I'm going to spend the next uh, few minutes just sending emails around furiously to all of you to uh, actually make it happen, uh, rather than just sitting here talking, um, so that. Um, that we, we get things moving along, um, and and I think that uh, we will just get this again for for two weeks. Actually, hang on, I got to think about this. Uh, oh man, my calendar's going to hold up. Two weeks. Okay, uh, anyway, I'm going to call it to a close. So, um, thanks everybody for joining. Um, look forward to my emails in a minute. And um, have a great couple of weeks and great progress. Um, great, great progress. I'm very excited. Okay. All right. See you later. Thanks, Talk everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks.